What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Disruptors in the Culture. I am your host, Joshua Meekins, and today I am joined by a guest co-host. You might have seen her as an alumni of the podcast. We have the amazing Miss Camille Smith. Hello. She will be with me today as we talk to our guest for the day, um, the illustrious Mr. Ricardo Dale. I will get to his introduction in a second. But as you know, we start off our episodes now with updates and announcements. So first and foremost, if you did not hear from our previous episode, we are doing a little thing where we are cutting down our episodes from being one hour long to about 30 minutes long. You know, we want the thought behind that was to give you guys something that was a little bit easier to digest, um, give you a really kind of more direct conversation with our creatives and the people that we're talking to our disruptors and just really do a job of, you know, giving you something that's a little bit more smooth. Um, but we also will be doing, uh, you know, longer conversations and exclusive content on our Patreon page. You can find our Patreon page in the link in our bio. Uh, that page is really important. You know, hopefully we, we grow more patrons as we continue to progress. But that's how we do this. You know, we get studio time. We get uh, amazing guests. We actually can pay for our production team. Shout out Visual Hub. You guys are fantastic. So in order to do that, you know, we really do need the support. And if you guys like our content and want more of it, please support. Show us some love. Um, you know, we want to do this at a, a more consistent basis. You want to give you guys more stories in Philadelphia and other places. You know, it, the sky's the limit. We just need the support and the people behind us. You also get, you know, our old head content, um, some upcoming projects that we have, the inside scoop, um, exclusive content on here. We do a newsletter, and we're going to do some more merch. So, you know, people who want to get some merch, the first place to find out, find out about it is on our Patreon. So please, 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 please check it out and uh, subscribe. Um, so without further ado... Um, I had mentioned it before, my uh, my my good friend, Mr. Ricardo Dale. He is a man of many talents. He calls himself the franchise for pretty pretty solid reasoning, I will say. Um, but today he is going to you know tell us about one his nonprofit, which is Free All Minds. Under that, he has Free All Minds Academy. I told him before I didn't want to you know go ahead and butcher <laughs> what he does and how he does it because it's very intricate. Not only is he in the trenches with his nonprofit but he actually does the work in the government. Um, he does hold a local government position as the youngest elected city council member, right? Yeah, in my city. In his city, in his city, repping your city. So I, I, we always start off the show with a little bit of, you know, who you are, how you got there, and what do you do? So if you can, please tell the beautiful people of Disruptors in the Culture who you are and, and what do you do? My name is Ricardo Dale. I'm a city councilman for Beverly City. I also am the executive director of Free All Minds Nonprofit. Um, I do speaking engagements as well from Los Angeles all the way to Kingston, Jamaica. I've been blessed to, you know, um, you know, travel, like really telling my story and, and speaking to people. But all in all, I would say um, a man of service. Right? Mm. That would be my the title that I would, you know, say that best suits me. I love that. Um, a man of service. So I, I, I know your story. I, the viewers don't know your story, and Camille does not know your story. So if you right. can just give us a little <laughs> sprinkle of uh, how Ricardo Dale became Ricardo Dale at this point. Yeah, so um, I think everything that I went through in like my teenage years was what really shaped me to be the person that I am today. It's the reason why I do the work that I do today. Mm -hmm. um, because even right now, like I see a lot of myself in the kids that I work with, and myself being somebody who, in high school, struggled academically, um, at one point had a 0 0.8 GPA, um, left my first high school, spent five years in high school before graduating, and for me, college wasn't really an option. I don't know what my options were. Mm -hmm. I didn't, um, you know, I really didn't see myself getting out of my neighborhood, and the only thing that I was used to was people in my neighborhood making fast money and chasing girls. It's like I'm young, and you know, that's what it is to do. Like, that's the thing to do. And I couldn't really see past that because I never saw anything other than that. And it took a few great men to come into my life to really show me something different. And, you know, the first was my basketball coach who ran a nonprofit organization. And that was my first kind of introduction to mm -hmm. what a nonprofit is. Um, another um, mentor of mine, his name was Dr. Pettis. He actually um, had me live with him, him and Mrs. Pettis, um, you know, let me live with them around 17 years old. Mm -hmm. And that also was another um, thing that kind of opened up my eyes to another environment where, you know, they had kids that were expected to go to college. And that was just like a wake up call for mm -hmm. me right there because, you know, those expectations kind of trickled down on me as well. Like me being in their presence, I was expected to now excel. So between, you know, them really 
you know, taking an interest in my life and my basketball coach taking an interest in my life, I think that's one of the things that um, really, you know, shifted my mindset and showed me that there's more than, you know, just what's in my neighborhood. And that exposure is what um, turned my life around. And it's crazy because, like, growing up in the environment that I grew up in, mm. a lot of people that, like, kind of tried to help me or support me in a way, like, felt bad for me mm. and was, like, sorry for me because it's, like, you know, he doesn't have his father in his life and he's struggling um, financially. Like, his, um, he has issues with his relationship with his mother and his, like, all this stuff. And they're, like, it was, like, kind of like a sob story to yeah. them. And that didn't help me, kind of feeling bad for me and maybe, like, getting me some clothes, which is nice, or, like, helping me out with food, which is nice. Um, none of that ever really shifted me into the right direction, but it took people like, you know, the Pettises and um, Coach O to kind of tell me, like, not to be, like, harsh, but, like, you got to figure this out. Yeah. Like, I don't care what you're going through. I'm not going to feel sorry for you. And if you sit here and you keep telling you s yourself that you're failing these classes because your father's not in your life, you're always going to be a failure because, quite frankly, he's not coming back. And you have to live with that. Like, that's your reality. So I could sit here and, you know, boo-hoo, poor little Ricardo, or I can help you figure this thing out. And I think it was like that um, that tough love and that belief mm -hmm. that, you know, um, a select few people had in me that kind of really shifted um, my mindset and had me take accountability for my own life. And I made that decision, like, yeah, I'm not going to let my circumstance – my circumstance really describe the person I am and kind of, you know, choose the life that I'm going to live. So I'm, I made a decision that it's like I'm going to choose my own path. Mm. And through that, doors just began to open. I was accepted into this private school, and it's like an $18,000 a year school to go to. <laughs> Expensive. But I took an initiative. <laughs> it ain't college. It's, it's high school. <laughs> it's high school. <laughs> and it's like I took the initiative to – you know, put myself in that environment because I'm mm -hmm. like, this is what I need to do. These are the people I need to be around. And I ended up going there um, on a full ride, not paying any money, and kind of turning myself around academically. Even after that, I still did poorly my beginning years. So mm -hmm. I... It's adjustment. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like, so I'm still, like, struggling. I graduate high school still with a 2.0, which that's, like, me, like, trying to pick everything up and me actually doing my work. And I still couldn't really get to where I needed to be. So college was still kind of up in the air mm -hmm. for me. Um, I don't know how much of an option it was for me. And then I started working First Star, mm -hmm. um, which is a mentoring program here um, in all over the country, but here in New Jersey. And I started working there at Rowan University, and I fell in love with it. Like yeah. that was a, I always knew that I liked working with people, but that was the first time that I felt like I was at home. And they, those group of students changed my life. And as much as I was there to help them, they didn't know how much they were helping mm. me. Like I was in a you know a dark space at that time, and I didn't know what was next for me. And you know they just brought light to my life every every single day, knowing that you know I had meaning, I had purpose on this earth, because every day that I woke up, you know they were excited to see me. They were excited mm. that I kept showing up for them. And there was just an amazing relationship there, and it was seen by the staff. So one day, uh, this guy, Robert Carr. <laughs> he's a good you, guy, man. He's a, he's a great guy. That you know we both know. Yeah. He came and he met with me. And he, you know, he heard a lot about my story. And on the spot, he offered me a full ride to any school in New Jersey. And it was just like, huh? Like, it's about to be August. School starts in September. <laughs> I haven't applied to any schools mm -hmm. in New Jersey. Oh, wow. Like, at all. And my SATs are horrible. My grades are not that good. And I'm like, how am I starting school in September? Um, that same day, Dean Jones comes and meets with me and tells me that if I come to Rowan University, he's going to guarantee me that I graduate in four years. And he'll do everything in his power to make sure that I'm, I'm successful. And Dean Jones was serious. And, <laughs> you know, it's people like that that, you know, guided me through, like, this path that I'm on. And... I believe that it's because I was walking in my purpose that, you know, God mm -hmm. continued to make a way for me. Mm -hmm. So as I continued down this path, the people that I needed to get to the next level, time after time, they continued to come. They continued mm -hmm. to step in, and doors continued to, um, you know, really open. I went on to Rowan University to sit on a board of trustees at the university, you know, being a, a represent 
expectation for all 17,000 students on campus. And that's a big deal. Um, that's not like, it's not, uh, I guess you say, a, a played down position. Like, you really had a say on yeah. the board of what the students thought. They had a, so the first year, it's like your, your alternate, so I'm still learning. Mm. My second year, I have the same vote as any other board member of the university mm. on That's so cool. all matters. And um, it's crazy because it's like, I didn't even think I was supposed to be here, let alone making decisions on mm. the entire university. Right. Um, I didn't even think that I would end up at this university. And I think it comes from, you know, like I said, that love and that passion that I had for the work that I was doing in it and, and people in general. So God just continued to, you know, make a way for me and made a way for me. And that's what I told myself, like, you know, I would continue to do. And that's why I started my nonprofit organization, because I thought to myself, how many young kids out there just like me are there? Mm. How many kids are there that's like you're a second away from throwing your life away or literally changing people's lives? And there's such a thin line between that. Um, it's really like night and day. I go back to my neighborhood, and this is like no knock on, on none of my guys, but I remember when I just got into city council, and I told one of my boys that, you know, I got the city council position. I'm one of the youngest councilmen in my city, one of the youngest in the state of New Jersey. And he's like, yo, I just got this new gun. And that's his reality. And it's not like, I'm like, I can't even like, I can't even be mad at you because that is good news to you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, at what point in, in life did I receive these opportunities that took me on a completely different path than you know you're on right now. Yeah. And you know, grew up to literally two minutes away from each other, went to every single class together, played on a basketball team together. Mm -hmm. Like literally, we're night and like night and day. Um, we're we're together all the time, and now our lives are night and day. And it's like, what's the difference between that? Mm -hmm. I was more motivated to than that person. I worked harder than that person. Not that much. Mm. I think the the biggest one of the biggest difference is I received more opportunities and I had a lot more exposure and I took those opportunities yeah. and I ran with them but I can't say that if they received some of those same opportunities they wouldn't be in a similar situation. Yeah. So I'm like I don't want to make excuses for nobody but we do have to take account that you know some people are just set up to fail and that are just at a major disadvantage. And it's easy to say, you know, well, they can, they should just make better choices. It's a lot harder when you don't have many good choices to make. There and, are the opportunities. You don't know that until you're there and until you're living that reality where you're 14, 13 years old and you don't have food and you're a man and you're just like, I have to figure this out for myself because I'm a man and this is like what men do and whatever, no matter what I have to do, I'm going to make sure that I eat. Maybe yeah. I have a little sister. I got to make sure she eats. So then, next thing you know, when you see me in the newspaper for doing whatever, and it's like, I don't want to justify this, you look down on me completely and say, like, that's a horrible person. Yeah. But me personally, I don't see that as a horrible person. I see that as a lost person, and I see that as a sometimes a confused person that thought that that was their only option. Mm. But there's a, a bit of understanding to it, and people hate it. Like, they're going to hate to hear that because they don't want to justify, you know, some of the things that are happening in poverty, some of the things that are happening in their in these inner cities, but it's like, I'm not justifying it, but I think that there's there's a major part of it that people wanna over overlook because it's in their benefit. Absolutely. So um, that's why I do the work that I do because I see so many boys, young men that, you know, can easily fall into, you know, the traps of society that if you just give them one little opportunity, they'll literally run with it. And I've seen it with kids that come into my program with straight Fs, like not listening to nobody, parents like yeah i don't think i don't know how long he'll he'll be here i don't know how long he's gonna stay but i guess he can give it a shot yeah. that are now a and b students showing wow. up every week N numerous sport athletes that's literally mm -hmm. like changing and lives that's it's like incredible it's crazy like majority of our students you know in my program um came in failing numerous classes and no student that has been in our program for this um this full um entity of this year is failing any class or has a D in any class. That's awesome. And it's like, did I 
have some extremely skilled tutors and like we just made them smart all of a sudden no we just gave them an opportunity and showed them that you know yeah. this is something that you can excel at and more than that we didn't just tell them that it was something that they had to do because we want you to do it like school kind of does it's like you go to school because you have to go to school yeah we show them that you know what it is what is it that you want to do say it's basketball that's one of our biggest things that we use in our program and i'm not gonna be on you heavy and tell you you got to go to school because i said you got to go to school you got to do your homework because you said you got to do your homework i'm going to take you on a tour and i'm going to let you talk to some college basketball players and i'm going to put you on a basketball team and i'm going to have you travel mm. outside of your city mm. and you're going to meet co other college basketball coaches other college players and i'm going to let you know the only way that you can get to that next level is if you also do the academic side of things. Mm. Right. And now I expose you, expose you to this life that you already were passionate about, you already wanted to be in, and I tapped into that even more and now let you know, like these are also the steps that you have to do to take there, um, take to get there. And I think that's one of the, um, you know, one of the, the best strategies that we've had so far, like unique strategies, is really using your passion to motivate you and to drive you to get to get you to where you want to be instead of like dangling something in front of you that you don't want mm. and i think that's what um education and a lot of programs do it's just like here come like come get this and yeah. it's just like i don't want it i don't care like you're telling me about college you're telling me about good grades why does that matter to me mm. right and it's like i'm gonna i'm the type of person and we took the approach in our program yeah. i'm gonna show you why that matters to you mm -hmm. and that's been the difference so I want to circle back for a minute because, again, I don't know you nearly as well. Um, so I have two questions. So you're in your local government. So how do you feel you're leveraging your previous experiences to make legitimate change? And then B, okay. Um, and then B, have you felt, how do you navigate the emotions between, you know, you're doing all these things, you're excelling, you're doing this franchise, you have, you know, your nonprofit and one of your best friends, you know, is excited about being, like having a gun. Like you can clearly see like the dualism between the two. So like, does that affect you emotionally? Is that ever like conversations that you actively try to have, you know, with your friends back home? Is that, I won't say like a lost cause, but you kind of just recognize that there's differences between, you know, you and some of the people that you've grown up with. So it's kind of a two part question. Um, so the first part of your question, I would say, the way that I like look to impact my community from the position that I'm in is just like taken from firsthand experience. Right. Um, you know, there was we lacked resources in the city growing up, so now one of my biggest initiatives is you know bringing back resources for youth, mm -hmm. whether it be you know youth sports and youth activities or more exposure to different career fields and um, college like college programs as well right. into the city. And it's like how. How do we go about doing that? And it's through partnering with the school district that, you know, I look to, um, you know, really, really work with in the future. And right now, currently, um, doing different events in the community mm -hmm. to really just bring the community together mm -hmm. has been um, a major focus as well. Because it's like, this is something that, you know, I like. This is something that I didn't see a lot when I was growing up. So this is something that, you know, I believe that it's, it's something that we need. Right. Um, and along with that question, your second part of your mm -hmm. question, where um, how do I feel about my friends that are just on a different path? I think it's still all love for me personally. Like I mm -hmm. see you, I'm gonna talk to you. Like it's like you're, you're like you're my guy forever, mm -hmm. um, regardless of um, the path that you choose. And I can only present you with opportunities, and that's all right. you know I do for for anybody. Like regardless of the path that you're you're going down. I'm always going to have love for you. I'm always going to um, be there for you. But I can only do what you allow me to do. And for anybody that, you know, I grew up with, anybody that I currently know or anybody who's making whatever decisions that they're making, I think the biggest thing that I'm, I'm, I focus on is just exposing you to opportunities, giving you the opportunity. So when whatever path you walk down, you could say, you know, I had options. Right. Uh, like option, options were presented to me. And that's a perfect pivot point, too, because when you were talking about throughout your childhood and your teenage years and you were talking about these people that continue to come into your life. Right. And that those were, you know, mentors and people that, you know, saw something in you. I think it's interesting because 
at least something that I realized over the course of my life is, you know, that's only half the battle. Was there like a point that you started to genuinely believe, you know, the, the family that allowed you to move in? Like, OK, like maybe, you know, I really should be going to college because like you can experience those expectations around you. And like, again, the children that are in your um or participate in your nonprofit, like they can, you know, see like, okay, like the organization in general wants me to do well in school, like that's fine. But what was kind of the point in your childhood that you were like, all right, like I can do this. Like the people can continue to come into your life, but what was, why did you take those opportunities, especially given your experience growing up? I think um, there's like this thing of like nature and nurture and like how mm. much of somebody is just who they are and mm -hmm. that's what they're born with and how much of it is you know the things that happen to them right and i think part of it for me was kind of a little bit of like i was kind of born in a way that this is something that i want to do and my mindset from a very young age was excellence when it came to things i was passionate about right so it's like other things i don't know but from a very young age it was always you know I was extremely um, focused on excellence when it came to things that I cared about. Right. And I was extremely, um, I think, extremely kind just growing up. It's like I wanted to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. Like, naturally, I just wanted to do the right thing. So regardless of what was around me and what I went through, it was very hard for me to fall into that. And even right. when I was in situations that I shouldn't have been in and doing the wrong things, in my mind, I always knew this is not where I'm supposed yeah, to be. Yeah, I shouldn't be like, doing Like, I was this. making those decisions, but I knew, like, right. this is not what I want to do. And I think it was a blessing that I had that knowledge from such a young age mm -hmm. that no matter where I went and no matter how many mistakes I knew I made, in my heart I knew I, I, can, be, I can be better than this. Right. I can do more than this. Even when I'm failing every single class and I'm, I'm missing school almost every other day, in my mind, college was never a thing that I'm like, it's like that that I didn't want to do. I wanted to do it. I just didn't know how to. Right. Like I just didn't know if it was realistic for me. Mm -hmm. And I think it took those people coming into my life and showing me those opportunities, which made it like realistic. Mm -hmm. And honestly, it didn't really become a thing. Like I wasn't a hundred percent sure until I was there, basically. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm listening to Bob tell me that I have a scholarship, and I'm still. I don't know. Like, <laughs> I'm like, until I'm taking classes, like I remember my yeah. first day taking classes and I'm in class and I'm like, oh, snap, like I can do yeah, this. Really like here. I can do this. <laughs> I'm like, was like maybe this day was kind of just super easy. Like it is the first week. Mm -hmm. And like, and it's just like every week was like a little surprise until yeah. I got comfortable. Mm -hmm. Like my first few weeks was like, oh no, it's about to get crazy and I'm, I'm not going to be able to manage this. Mm -hmm. And every week is like, oh, like I'm doing this. Like I'm really here. Mm -hmm. And I just kept kept going and kept going and it's like it's like a shock like some days I still wake up and be like it's crazy um where I was at and you know where I am now yeah. right so even I, I want to give you a little bit of time make sure we talk about this but like the two things that y you've taken those lessons and you've created for your minds the nonprofit. Yeah. can you tell us about what you guys do and what you guys serve and like who you serve and how that operates I want to give you some time you know shout out to the organization you created definitely so for our minds nonprofit, we have <laughs> Good bless you, you, sir. Bless you. Thank you. But um, so we have Free All Minds Academy under our nonprofit, and Free All Minds Academy is a a mentoring program for kids of color in Burlington County and Camden County. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what we do on a weekly basis, we have tutoring sessions. Mm -hmm. We also do workshops um, centered around life skills, career readiness, and also um, preparing them for college. So our our mission is to expose youth to the tools that they need to excel academically, professionally, athletically, and emotionally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the way that we kind of tap into those four things is, you know, relatively simple when it comes to like ac academics, um, the basic um, things from SAT prep to tutoring to, um, you know, exposing them to different um, colleges, college majors and different colleges. Then emotionally, I think is something that's like overlooked because it's just that de the dependability that we um, have and being there for them on a consistent basis and having real life conversations with them mm -hmm. um, professionally, whether it be like the attire they wear or how they speak or how they enter certain rooms are um, workshops that we do that um, happen on a weekly basis. Along with athletically, we have two tribal basketball teams 
that our students play on and we prepare them, you know, as best as possible. You know, everybody's not going to play college <laughs> basketball. Yeah. Everybody's not going to go to the league. But we're going to p- prepare you to the best of um, our ability. And, you know, the four of those things all together make up, you know, what we do as an organization yeah. um, to, you know, kind of put <laughs> it into a, n- a nutshell. Yeah. So um, our focus is 100 percent acceptance in the college. Mm-hmm. Um, that's our like uh, that's our goal. And that's what we continue to work for, work towards that all of our kids are accepted to a university and all of our students that do come into our program. That is their plan, and yeah. that's their that's their goal. So that's one of our driving forces. Okay, very cool. That's solid. I mean, I I, I wish we had more time to delve into that because I want to go into your city councilman piece too. But we will do that at another time. But I want to give yourself, you know, give it give you give you a chance to uh, to shout out to the camera. You know, your contact info, what you have upcoming, uh, anything that people can find you. So. Uh, Upcoming, we really don't have nothing co- coming up as far <laughs> as event. <laughs> as far as events, make it up, make it up. So <laughs> <laughs> we podcast today. That was it. That was yeah, all. That's, that's about it. Nah, but um, now nah, upcoming. Let me let me be serious. But upcoming, I'm, we're looking to um drop some merchandise so you can check out Free All show Minds the, show brand. The, show them the shirt. Um, I'm wearing it right now. Free All Minds Academy. So, um, that's that's what's up coming up next. Um, other than that, you could also follow us at fam underscore nonprofit for our, our nonprofit page and free all minds underscore for my personal page that I'll have speaking engagements, work that I do in the community, um, community events through my own organization, community events through local government and any updates on, you know, my personal life and my businesses as well. This will not be the last you guys hear Ricardo Dale. I promise you that. We're going to do some more content with him and see if we can do some more stuff with his his nonprofit as well. But um, Ricardo, honestly, man, you know, this was a long time coming. Definitely. Happy to have you here. Open up this platform for you to be able to talk. Camille, holding it down, co-host <laughs> activities. Doing the best I can. Doing the best you can. You have the experience. I just think, you know, we just <laughs> got to find your pocket. Right, you found right, it. right, right. Absolutely find your pocket. But please, if you guys, again, like Ricardo said, please follow the nonprofit. Follow him. He's doing incredible work. It's very rare. Uh, one of our uh, podcast alum, Daryl Edmonds, and Friday is Tide. You know, when you're from a community and you pour so much back into that community, it, it means a lot. There are very few people really doing that and nowadays. And to find those people and to see how they're, you know, disrupting their culture, their community, really, really just, you know, making the change that they want to see, it re- really means a lot. So, Ricardo, uh, again, I applaud you for everything that you do. And, you know, I, I hope that it continues to grow and become everything you imagine it to be at the end of the day. But please, again, for those of you who are following the podcast, follow us, you know, Disruptors in the Culture, Disruptors ITC, uh, ITC excuse me, on Instagram. Uh, we're working on a Twitter. We haven't got one of those yet. But definitely uh, check us out on Patreon. Subscribe, support, support, support. We want to tell more stories like this. We want to be able to to share with you, you know, everything that we discover and all the people we find on our journey. So again, uh, follow us, follow these two amazing people who are with me today. The Visual Hub, shout out y'all. Thank you guys so much. Shout out Rec, who holds us down with the studio. Um, and hopefully you will, no, nah, you definitely will. I'm playing. You will see more episodes <laughs> of Disruptors in Culture. Talk to y'all later. <laughs>